<laughs> you know, before I say what it is that I'm about to say, I want to make sure that I provide a little bit of context. Contrary to popular belief, I don't hate the Minnesota Vikings at all. I love this team. I've been a fan of this team. I've been following this team for 19 years now. Growing up through my childhood, I would defend the honor of the Minnesota Vikings against any and everybody that dared talk smack about my Vikings team to me. What are you talking about? We're going to win the Super Bowl. Our defense is going to be just fine with Brian Russell and Fred Smoot. You'll see. I would say that every single year. It came from the bottom of my heart. I really, really meant it. I thought that the Vikings would win the Super Bowl every single year, and I couldn't wait to shut the haters up. And then finally, year, years went by, year after year after year, of just heartbreak and just getting beat down from this team. team. The team just losing in the most catastrophic type of ways to where finally those rose-tinted glasses, I had to take them off, and finally I just saw this team for what they are. Now, is that childhood of realistic Randy still there as far as, this team's going to be great, you'll see. I like to think that he is, but that's not the case today. The Minnesota Vikings have got to be the dumbest team in the National Football League. They're not interested in winning, damn it. They're more so interested in blind loyalty. This is a team, the Minnesota Vikings, that has a quarterback that's taking up significant cap space, and fiscal responsibility is at an all-time high in this situation. Concluding the 2018 season, going into 2019, the Minnesota Vikings have multiple areas of need. The linebacker position is not one of them, certainly not starting linebacker, and that's assuming that Anthony Barr was going to go to the Jets as earlier as reported. And you know what's funny? As Eric Wilson, I talk about him a lot. I think Eric Wilson could do a pretty good job of filling the shoes of Anthony Barr. Eric Wilson started four games last year compared to Anthony Barr's 13. Eric Wilson, in those four games that he started, he had 32 tackles, four tackles for losses, five quarterback hits. Now, that's in four starts. Compare that to Anthony Barr with 55 tackles, eight TFLs, four quarterback hits in 13 games, okay? So, in less than a third of the, of the games that Anthony Barr has played in, Eric Wilson has more than half of the tackles, half of the TFLs, and more quarterback hits than Anthony Barr. But yet, somehow, we look for any and every reason to pick Eric Wilson apart. Oh, he can't step in for Anthony Barr. He needs he doesn't have the size like Anthony Barr, or he's got to work on this technique or this technique or that technique. But as far as production is concerned, as far as making plays, I believe that Eric Wilson could fill in just fine. But we look for any and every reason to justify and kiss the ass of Anthony Barr. And let's just make sure we get this out the way. The reason why I'm saying this right now is because Anthony Barr did an about face. He was going to sign with the New York Jets. He was going to go with the New York Jets as earlier reported. Then he did an about face, and he's going to come back to the Minnesota Vikings. We look for any and every reason to justify Anthony Barr and the lack of plays that he makes or doesn't make for that matter. Why? Because he brings pressure. He brings pressure. Oh, he's one of the top five, top three linebackers in the league at bringing pressure. You advanced analytics stat geeks out there that use that to justify this dude is completely unbelievable that's like Carl Anthony Towns right their last game against the Wizards before he got hurt he's still day-to-day -day. we'll see how he does Carl Anthony Towns dunked on Jeff Green uh, outside the key right he went basically on a stretch Armstrong type of run and just dunked over him we had no business making that dunk I basically said on Twitter and uh, Facebook oh no Twitter that this dude Carl Anthony Towns leapt from the beginning of time and dunked on Jeff Green. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was a highlight reel of the season for Carl Anthony Towns. But to you analytic, advanced analytic metric stat geeks out there, you know what's more important to you than the actual highlight? You know what's really interesting about that play? That one particular play increased his sh true shooting percentage by 0.2% and his overall win share percentage by 0.8%. Oh, shut the hell up. Anthony Barr doesn't do a damn thing that's worth, he's getting paid how much? And Albert Breer just tweeted out that Barr is going to return to Minnesota for around $13.5 million per year. <laughs> this dude is getting paid top 10 linebacker money in the NFL as it stands right now, according to Spotrack.com. 
Anthony Barr, the recipient of the most charitable Pro Bowl selections of all time that I have ever seen in my life. Oh my God, he is such an integral part of this defense. Forget all the big big money stats and all the big time stats of sacks and tackles and all that stuff because the most uh, tackles that Anthony Barr has ever had in a season was 75 for a linebacker. That's pretty damn ridiculous. He does. He's so valuable and he deserves top 10 money in the league as far as a linebacker position goes because he does all the things that you don't see. All the little things. Well, damn it, sign me up for NASCAR. I can't drive 150 miles per hour around a around a racetrack, but I can turn left a couple of times. Oh, sign me up for the NBA. I can't dunk. I can't move against NBA players, but if you put me on the free throw line, I can shoot about eh, like 77, 80% from the free throw line. I can do that. Oh, you top 10 money in the league at his position because he does all the things that we can't see. You're right. He doesn't do anything. We haven't seen anything. And we're talking about Anthony Barr signing this dude to the money because of ifs, hype and ifs. If he becomes a full-time pass rusher, if we transition our defense to a 3-4 set, if Anthony Barr gives 110% moving forward, if he develops effort every single play, we've been saying that about Anthony Barr for the last three damn years. And you know what's funny? Anthony Barr, oh, he's such an integral part of this defense, so forget that. Excuse me, Daniil Hunter, Linval Joseph, uh, Harrison Smith, Xavier Rhodes in 2017, you guys actually should take a pay cut. You should actually renegotiate. You should actually get contract restructures to actually reduce your uh, – your salary that you're getting paid on an annual basis because you're only as good as Anthony Barr makes you out to be. Man, if you don't get this crap out of my face, this is hilarious and so unnecessary. Did you even try? Did you even try to negotiate with Sheldon Richardson's camp for a contract extension? Did you even try that at all? So in other words, knowing that you can create but so much cap space, knowing that you went 8-7-1 and one last year, you're trying to do better than you did last year, knowing that you have only but so much wiggle room to get in enough pieces and then still address the draft to give your team the best possible chance to win. You guys got into a boardroom and had a meeting and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get all this money together and we're going to throw it at Anthony Barr. That is absolutely unnecessary. You know what's crazy? And this is beyond Anthony Barr. This is on Rick Spielman now. I'm so done with Rick Spielman, dude. And Mike Zimmer, oh, this is your baby. Oh, this is your first draft pick. I love him like a son. Oh, please give me a break. He doesn't give you a better chance at winning. Anthony Barr is not 12 and a half or $13 million than Eric Wilson. This is ridiculous. You're not interested in winning. You're just interested in blind loyalty. And while you're at it, why even stop there? Well, I'm so sick of every single year. Can we address the offensive line? Can we ad address the offensive line? Can we please address the offensive line? You're like, no, we are not. Screw the offensive line. So let's go keep that same energy in the 2019 draft. Screw the offensive line. In the With the 18 pick, go after Ed Oliver. Go after a defensive tackle, okay? we Have Shamar Stephan come off the bench to replace Ed Oliver for a couple of plays. And then in the second round, you, you know, we could go offensive line, but mm, we need to keep that same patchwork offensive line energy. So you know what? Instead of doing offensive line in the second round, bring in Mike Remmers. Bring Mike Remmers back for cheap. Get him on a one-year prove-it deal, damn it, and so he can go back out there and play right guard every day. And you know what? Move Riley Reef to left guard. That should be, shouldn't be a problem, right? You know what? Don't invest in offensive line at all in the draft. In the second round, mm, oh, I don't know. Oh, get another cornerback. Get another cornerback. In the third round linebacker in the fourth round safety in the fifth round defensive end however many picks get as many defensive players as possible this is so unnecessary rick rick what are you doing rick it's so unnecessary like people that bring vegan dishes to potlucks the hell is wrong with y'all you think i'm about to take a pity bite of your tofu casserole <laughs> oh but it's so healthy and nutritious <laughs> screw that that's what the salad's for and that's not to say you need to bring anything any type of meat dishes or anything like that there's plenty of options you could bring you could bring a fruit tray a chips and dip gluten-free plain cheese pizza bro a box of raisin bran something it's unnecessary rick 
Rick Spielman, Mike Zimmer, you know what? To hell with this. You're in the you're basically on the hot seat this year anyway. So do whatever the hell you want. And damn it, maybe once you go eight and eight again in 2019 and this team falls apart and you get up on the podium, Mike Zimmer, and talk about how the offensive line is soft again. I don't want to hear a damn thing. Screw the offensive line. Keep that same energy. This team is one of the dumbest teams in the National Football League. The fans care about winning more than his front office and coaching staff does. We do this once a week. My, uh, my apologies. We do this twice a week. Mediocre at Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Catch me on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at Realistic Randy. Uh, Tuesday's podcast, or actually Wednesday's podcast on Score North. It's usually on Tuesdays, but the Anthony Barr News screwed it all up. Saturday on my YouTube channel. We'll see you on Saturday.